Welcome. Welcome to a journey of discovery as we unlock the secrets of the mind and I reveal the mysteries of consciousness. On this podcast, join us as we explore the philosophical perspectives of the nature of consciousness and discover how they shape our understandings of the mind, brain, and reality. Consciousness is a topic that is relevant to both science and philosophy, as it touches on fundamental questions about the nature of the mind, the brain, and the self. In the, in the science field, the study of consciousness is focused on understanding the neural and cognitive processes that give rise to conscious experience. Researchers in the, in the fields such as cognitive science and neuroscience use very variety of methods, variety of methods, including brain imaging, neuropsychology, computational molding, to study the brain and try to understand how it generates conscious experiences. Philosophy, on the other hand, is concerned with understanding the nature of consciousness itself. Philosophers have been debating the nature of consciousness for centuries and have proposed a variety of theories and ideas about what philosophy or about what consciousness is, how it arises, and what it means to be conscious. Some of the key philosophical philosophical questions that have been discussed include what is the relationship between consciousness and the brain? Is consciousness a fundamental feature of the universe or an emergent property of complex system? What is the relationship between consciousness and the brain? Is consciousness a fundamental feature of the universe or an emergent property of complex systems? What are the implications of consciousness for our understanding of free will and moral responsibility? The intersection of science and philosophy on consciousness is important as it helps to integrate different prop different perspectives and approaches to the topic and allows for a more holistic understanding of consciousness and its underlining mechanisms. From the look of these areas, we can see how complex the topic of consciousness this already is. To add to this complexity, we will dive into a deeper understanding of philosophical perspectives surrounding consciousness. From the look of these areas, we can see how complex the topic of consciousness already is. To add to this complexity, we will now dive into some philosophical perspectives surrounding consciousness. From dualism to materialism, idealism to phenomenology, and Eastern philosophy. We will explore how each perspective also offers unique insights and understanding into the nature of consciousness and the mind. Let's start with dual, dual, dualism. This perspective holds that consciousness and the physical world are separate and distance, distant entities. According to dualism, consciousness is not something that can be explained by physical processes alone. There are two main types of dualism, which are substance dualism. This perspective holds that consciousness is a non-physical substance that exists independently of the physical body. It argues that the mind of, or the soul is a separate entity from the body and that the mind cannot exists independently of the body after death. Property dualism. This perspective holds that consciousness is a, is a non-physical property of the brain. It argues that the mind is not a separate entity from the body, but rather a property of the brain. Dualism has been a popular perspective throughout history 
especially in Western philosophy and theology. However, it has been criticized by many philo philosophers and scientists who argued that it is difficult to reconcile with the available science evidence that it raises many questions about the relationship between the mind and the brain. Another note is that is also one of the oldest and most controversial due to the lack of evidence and difficulty of providing a testable theory. Materialism. This perspective holds that consciousness can be explained entirely in terms of physical processes, such as those in the brain. Materialism argues that consciousness is a product of the brain and that there is no need to postulate, postulate any non-physical entities. According to materialism, the brain and the nervous system are responsible for generating consciousness experience. And everything we experience and perceived is ultimately reducible to the physical processes. There are two main forms of materialism. Physical, physicalism, the perspective holds that everything that exists is physical and conscious and that consciousness is a product of that physical brain. Physicists, physicalists, physicists argue that's that physicalists argued that the mental state of processes can be reduced to the physical state and processes in the brain. Functionalism. This perspective holds that consciousness can be explained in terms of functions and it performs, rather than physical structure of the brain. Functionalists argue that a machine or a computer could be conscious if it could perform the same functions as a human brain. Materialists is one of the most widely accepted philosoph philosophical perspectives on consciousness among scientists and philosophers. It is supported by the recent advances in cognitive science, neuroscience, and neurobiology, which have been which have provided increasingly increasing evidence for the physical bias of consciousness. However, <clears throat> it also been criticized for failing to account for certain aspects of consciousness experience, such as Cuilia, and for not being able to explain the subject nature of consciousness. Idealism. This, per this perspective holds that consciousness is a fundamental reality and that the physical world is an illusion. According to Ildil, idealism, idealism, the world is created and perceived by the mind, and the physical objects do not exist independently of consciousness. One of the most famous idealism was George Bakley, an Irish, philo an Irish philosopher who proposed that physical objects are simply collections of ideas in the mind of God. He argues that objects only exist in the mind of the perceiver and that objects do not hold any in any independent existence outside the mind idealism has been minority a minority perspective throughout history it is often criticized for being unable to account for the existence of physical objects the independent existence of their mind of other minds and the possibility of error and perception phenomenology this perspective emphasizes the subjective experience of consciousness and the study of the structure of conscious experience. It argues that the conscious uh, should be studied in its own right, rather than reduced to the neurobiological processes. The father of phenomenology is Edmund Husserl, a German philosopher who proposed that the study of consciousness should focus on the phenomena or appearances of things as they are given to us or conscious experiences rather than on the things themselves. He believed that consciousness should be studied in its own right rather than being reduced to physical or non-biological processes. 
Critics of phenomenology argue that it is difficult to study consciousness in a rigorous and scientific way, and that it is too forced on subjective experience at the expense of objective reality. Additionally, some argue that phenomenology is too abstract and that its concepts are too difficult to internalize in empirical research. Eastern philosophy. Eastern philosophies such as Vedanta Buddhism and Zen Buddhism has been own has been its own unique perspective of consciousness, emphasizing self-awareness, the nature of self, and the relationship between consciousness and the external world. Vedanta is a school of thought in Hinduism that holds that the ultimate reality is a state of pure consciousness known as Brahma. According to Vedanta, the individual self, Atam, is ultimately identical to Brahma, the, and the goal of spiritual practice is to realize the, this identity and achieve liberation from the cycle of reincarnation. Buddhism, on the other hand, holds that the self is an illusion and that the ultimate goal is to achieve a state of enlightenment or nirvana in which the individual self is dissolved and the individual consciousness merges with the universal consciousness. Buddhism teaches that all phenomena are in, in permanent, including the self, and that all suffering arises from attachment to the illusion of separate self. Zen Buddhism, Zen Buddhism is a branch of Buddhism that emphasizes the use of meditation and mindfulness as a means of achieving insight into the nature of self and the world. Zen Buddhism I hope I'm saying this right, because I don't think I am, but uh, forgive me for that. Buddhism? I'm, I'm reading it how it's like written, so I apologize. That emphasizes that the use of meditation and mindfulness as a mean of achieving insight into the nature of self and the world. Zen Buddhism teaches that the true nature of the self is pure consciousness, and that the goal of spiritual practice is to realize this through direct experience. All these Eastern philosophy philosophers have the belief that the mind and the external world are intimately in interconnected and that the true nature of self and real reality can only be understood through direct experience and perception rather than through reason and logic or logic <clears throat> they also emphasize the idea of non-dualism the belief that the self and the external world are not separate but interconnected and that consciousness is the ultimate reality critics 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 of eastern philosophy argue that some of its concepts are difficult to understand and that it is not as simple Thematic or logical as Western philosophy. Addition, uh, uh, as Western philosophy. Additionally, some argue that Eastern philosophy is too focused on spiritual or mystical experiences, and that it lacks scientific rigor or empirical bias on Western philosophy. They, this is, yeah, this is a. Uh, Get you thinking, right? Like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself and I'm just like sitting and I'm like, this this is reality. This is consciousness. Like, I can literally just look at my head right now and like, or like look at this microphone or look at this tablet or the couch or even look at outside. Like, this experience has always baffled my mind and consciousness Either it comes from the mind due to the processes, or it's a different part of existence coming from somewhere else, 
or it's purely just here. Like, it's fascinating stuff. As we come to the end of this episode, we want you we want to thank you for listening and joining us in this exploration of consciousness and the various philosophical perspectives. We hope that this conversation has shared some light on the nature of consciousness and how different philosophers philosophies attempt to understand it. Remember, consciousness is a complex topic, and there's always more to learn and discover. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to having you on the next episode. This is your host, signing off. Have a good day, evening, or night, depending on when you're listening to this episode. And y'all take care. Goodbye.